the morning on which Buddha achieved enlightenment from The Light of Asia by Sir Edwin Arnold, a White Lotus Day reading, read by Dave Marsland of Cardiff Theosophical Society. Lo, the dawn sprang with Bud's victory. Lo, in the east flamed the first fires of beauteous day, poured forth through fleeting folds of night's black drapery. High in the widening blue the herald star faded to paler silver, as there shot brighter and brighter bars of rosy gleam across the grey. Far off the shadowy hills saw the great sun before the world was ware, and donned their crowns of crimson. Flower by flower felt the warm breath of morn and gan unfold their tender lids. Over the spangled grass swept the swift footsteps of the lovely light, turning the tears of night to joyous gems, decking the earth with radiance, broidering the sinking storm clouds with a golden fringe, gilding the feathers of the palms which waved glad salutation, darting beams of gold into the glades, touching with magic wand the stream to rippled ruby. In the break, finding the mild eyes of the antelopes, and saying, It is day. In nested sleep, touching the small heads under many a wing, and whispering, Children, praise the light of day. Whereat there piped anthems of all the birds, the curls fluted song, the bulbul's hymn, the morning morning of the painted thrush, the twitter of the sunbirds starting forth, to find the honey ere the bees be out, the grey crow's caw, the parrot's scream, the strokes of the green hammersmith, the miner's chirp, the never-finished love-talk of the doves, yea, and so holy was the influence of that high dawn which came with victory, that far and near, in homes of men there spread an unknown peace. The slayer hid his knife, the robber laid his plunder back, the shroff counted full tale of coins, all evil hearts grew gentle, kind hearts gentler, as the balm of that divinest daybreak lightened earth. Kings at fierce war called truce. The sick men leaped laughing from beds of pain. The dying smiled, as though they knew that happy morn was sprung. From fountains farther than the utmost east, and o'er the heart of Sadyazodara, sitting forlorn at Prince Siddhartha's bed, came sudden bliss, as if love should not fail, nor such vast sorrow miss to end in joy. So glad the world was, though it wist not why, that over desolate wastes went swooning songs of mirth, the voice of bodiless prets and butts, foreseeing bud, and divas in the air cried, It is finished, finished, and the priests stood with the wondering people in the streets, watching those golden splendours flood the sky, and saying, There hath happed some mighty thing. Also in ran and jungle grew that day, friendship amongst the creatures, Spotted deer browsed fearless where the tigress fed her cubs, and cheetahs lapped the pool beside the bucks. Under the eagle's rock the brown hairs scoured, while his fierce beak but preened an idle wing. The snake sunned all his jewels in the beam, with deadly fangs in sheath. The shrike let past the nestling finch. The emerald halcyons sate dreaming while the fishers played beneath. Nor hawked the merops, though the butterflies crimson and blue and amber flitted thick around his perch. The spirit of our Lord lay potent upon man and bird and beast. Even while he mused under that bodhi tree, glorified with the conquest gained for all, and lightened by a light greater than days. Then he arose, radiant, rejoicing, strong, beneath the tree, and lifting his high voice, spake this, in hearing of all times and worlds. Many a house of life hath held me, seeking ever him who wrought these prisons of the senses. Sorrow fraught, sore was my ceaseless strife. But now, thou builder of this tabernacle, thou, I know thee, never shalt thou build again these walls of pain, nor raise the roof tree of deceits, nor lay fresh rafters on the clay. Broken thy house is, and the ridgepole split, delusion fashioned it, Safe pass I thence, deliverance to obtain.